On today's episode, we are continuing our series on sensory bins, and we will be talking all about why you should use sensory bins with your preschoolers. So if you missed the last episode, you can grab the link in the show notes if you want to also listen in on what a sensory bin is and how you can create one for your own children. Hey there, Mama. I'm Lauren Brainerd, and this is Teacher Littles at Home. I'm so excited you have tuned in as I share fun and hands-on activities you can use right away to help you play and learn with your little ones. So let's dive right into today's episode so you can make more memories than you ever dreamed of. Sensory bins are all the rage these days because they do provide a fun and interactive way for our little ones to explore their senses and to learn about the world around them. But what exactly is a sensory bin? I know you're probably sitting there thinking, I've seen them on Pinterest, I've seen the reels on Instagram, but just, I want you to take this moment to really think about how to make a sensory bin work for you in your home. A sensory bin really is whatever you create it to be. There is no one size fits all approach when it comes to sensory bins. They're made to create opportunities for imagination, for play, and for learning while we are engaging our children's five senses. They provide opportunities for our little ones to explore new textures and new things, discover new opportunities for imagining new things, and to experiment with different textures, colors, shapes, materials, whatever it might be that you're using that day. So why should you use a sensory bin? Rather than telling you all the research-backed reasons why you need to start sensory bins right away, instead I'm just going to tell you a story about the very first time that we used a sensory bin in our home. So let's go back five years. My son was two and a half years old. My daughter was three weeks old. She was brand new. And I was looking for something new to try to engage my little one so that I could manage to make dinner, to change diapers, find some sense of clean, clean's a strong word, picked up might be more appropriate word for my home. So we tried out a sensory bin. I put in rolled oats, some cinnamon sticks, some measuring cups and measuring spoons, and I set it on the kitchen table in front of my son's booster seat. Brought him to the table, and I went over the expectations that You know, we're going to play with the sensory bin, but we need to keep everything in the bin. Next week on the show, I will be sharing more about my tips and tricks for implementing because I know a lot from a lot of friends I've talked to, they're a little scared of sensory bins because there's rice and beans and oats, you know, whatever you might put in them and they can get messy. So I'll be sharing next week all those tips and tricks. So don't get hung up there and think I'm never going to do a sensory bin because we'll cover that next week. All right, back to my son. So he comes to the table, sits down, and was so excited. Dug his fingers right into the oats, felt those feelings on his fingers, grabbed a measuring spoon and a measuring cup. Now, I did use metal ones, which was fun because they made some really interesting noises as he was filling them. So he would scoop the oats, put it in the measuring cup, pour it out. Next thing I know, he set forgot I was there, was so into this sensory bin. He's using the cinnamon sticks I put in to stir it and then picking up the nutmeg and rubbing it on the measuring spoon because he's seen me do that in the kitchen when I'm baking, only I'm using a microplane grater, not a measuring spoon. But that's the beauty of kids. They get so excited and they can turn anything into play. So next thing I know, he tells me he's making an apple pie. He's making hot cinnamon cider. There were just, I can't even remember, I mean, it's been five years, all the things that he made, but I remember this day so clearly for one specific reason. We give our kids a lot of things to play with. They play with them, they move on. We don't remember everything our kids play with. So I remember this moment so clearly, not because my son found a new toy or played with something interesting, because that happens every day. I mean, our kids play with things but it was for a different reason. It was because for the first time since I had brought my baby girl home from the hospital, my son sat for a full hour doing something. He didn't need my help. He didn't ask me questions. I mean, sure, we chatted back and forth a little bit as he was digging his fingers in the sensory bin, but my daughter was napping. My son was engaged in a sensory bin and I made dinner. I got to do some light housework. 
It was incredible. And that was when I found the magic of sensory bins. I couldn't get enough. Might have gone a little crazy at that point at the grocery store, the Dollar Tree, Hobby Lobby, don't tell my husband, grabbing all the fillers and tools and seasonal pieces I could get my hands on over the next couple months. We created bins with beans and rice, sequins. Sometimes I used toys. I used Play-Doh. I mean, there were so many things that we tried over the next couple months, and my son loved all of them. He was only two and a half years old. Now, given I do think he's pretty independent for his age, but a two and a half year old little boy full of energy was able to sit and do this sensory bin for that long that I could make dinners, clean the house. I mean, clean's a strong word. I picked up. We were, we're all doing our best, right? But it just, it gave him something fun to do that I created for him, which made him feel so special, made him feel like he was getting the extra attention that he needed with a new baby in the house. And it was just so much fun. So I know this episode probably won't air for a couple more months, but now I want to fast forward to today. That same little two and a half year old boy is almost eight years old. And a couple nights ago, we were carving pumpkins. Now, when he was two and a half, so we did that first oatmeal bin, I remember back in that September. Then in October, we did some pumpkin theme things. Okay, it's just some backstory here. That same little eight-year-old boy and I were carving pumpkins a couple nights ago, and he reminded me all about the time that we put pumpkin seeds and fibers in a bin in the backyard, and he got to play with it. So then he wanted to know, as we were carving pumpkins, if I was going to take all of that stuff that's in the pumpkin and save it for his younger sister, which... That spoke volumes to me. I'm calling that a mom win because how often do we take our kids to do things and create these extravagant memories for them, but they don't remember a few years later? So something about these sensory bins really engaged his brain enough to remember them all these years later. So with that said, if you're wondering why you should use a sensory bin, I just want you to think about All the ways that a sensory bin is engaging our children's five senses, smell, sight, taste, touch, their sense of hearing. So think about the sensory bin that we've been talking about today. As he ran his fingers through the oats, that made a noise. That engaged his sense of hearing. The measuring cups and measuring spoons tapping each other as he was playing, that made a noise. That engaged his senses. The cinnamon and nutmeg in the bin engaged his sense of smell. Obviously, we're engaging their sense of sight because they're seeing everything. Touch as they're feeling everything. We didn't taste anything in this bin, but I have done some edible sensory bins, which are really fun too, as your kids get a little bit older. So just think about this. It's all there. When we give our children the opportunity to engage all their senses in one activity, we're giving them the ability to learn in a new way. There's so many different benefits to sensory bins, and I've written an entire blog post about why you should use them with preschoolers. I'm not going to cover all those things today, but I will link that post in the show notes in case you want to have a look at that. But in that blog post, I go over how sensory bins are so great for giving hands-on activities, their language development, their problem-solving skills, self-regulation, emotional regulation, all those things. So you can take a look at that blog post if you want to learn more about the benefits for our children's brain and bodies and growth and development. Now, if you're feeling like this is something you could do and you want to go grab a bin and start the sensory bin right now, I do want to warn you of the importance of setting your child up for success before you hand them a sensory bin. Picture for a moment handing your two-year-old a bin full of rice And what could happen if you don't very, very clearly and explicitly go over the expectations for how to use that bin? From talking with other moms, I can tell you, you'll still be finding little bits of rice two years later. So next week on the show, we will be going over all of my tips and tricks for how to set up and implement a sensory bin in a way that's not only so much fun for your little one, but also giving you the freedom to walk away cook dinner, clean something, change a diaper, whatever it might be. I can't wait to chat with you all about this next week on the show. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day with your little ones today. And I hope that this episode has encouraged you to try something new and helped you feel a little bit more prepared to do so. 
Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Teach Your Littles at Home. I hope you are feeling so inspired to create a new activity to do right away with your little ones. If you like listening to my mommy, will you please leave her a review? Before you head off to plan the next activity, would you mind leaving me a quick review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you are listening from? This is the only way for me to know if you're finding my tips, activities, and advice helpful, and I get so excited reading each and every review. I hope this episode has left you feeling empowered to try something new with your kids this week. And if so, would you please hit the share button and share this episode with another one of your mama friends who also wants to create activities with her little ones. I can't wait to share even more fun activities with you on our next episode. Have a wonderful rest of your day playing and making memories with your little ones.